Hello everyone. So today I'll be wiring up uh, landscaping lights for my wooden fence. The lights I purchased for my fence are from GKO LED and I had found them on Amazon. Now, just so you guys have an idea, just to unbox it. So you have the screws that it comes with, okay, and also the, uh, the plastic anchors, if you were to place it in, I guess, a uh, masonry wall. Um, then you have also the wire nuts, okay, and to my understanding, there's also possible, I think there's dielectric grease in there, um, so to help with the connection. But the lamp itself is right here. The right lamp here. measures from the back to the front about an inch and a quarter, and then the diameter from side to side is a little over three inches, okay? And then you have your wiring. They already had cut it for you. Now to open it, all you have to do is just twist it, okay? And pop it off. All right, and that's what you have. It's a nice feature because it has a little line to let you know how well it will be balanced, okay? And then on the back, it has the the rubber footing there too. So once you install it, again, it goes on to its side and then you just twist it, okay? So I've seen all the lights where uh, there are screws on the outside, but this one doesn't have it, which is nice, okay? And it also, on this backing here, has a nice silicon coating to keep the moisture out or any debris or bugs. This is a two watt LED lamp, and it measures, I believe, 40 or 50,000 hours uh, of continuous use. LED, LEDs typically last a lot longer. Okay, but I'm not going to have mine on 24-7, but rather on a timer. Okay. The lights do not come with a transformer, but rather you have to purchase one on your own. So the one that I'm using is from Ring. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Ring. Uh, and that way I can control it with my phone or through Alexa. Um, and also, I guess, via scheduling a timer okay so far what i've done is i've done these three you can count uh the one over there all the way to here and obviously this wire i'm gonna bury into the ground so it'll go towards the uh the deck where the power is um but what i did was uh also add a little bit of a loop um on both sides of the post. So in case the wood does expand or contract, it gives it a little bit of a leeway. And uh, this wire over here, I still have yet to staple up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it on that end over there. So the measurement between this post and that post over there is 85 inches. It's a little different because um, from this post to that post, it measures 92. So each post that was put down, um, are kind of close together but not quite so uh, to me it wouldn't matter as long as I'm lighting everything up it doesn't have to be equal distance from each other uh, from light to light but uh, I am using the post as my guideline so with 85 inches uh, span um, I drew my mid mark right there and that's actually at uh, 42 and a half okay for me to do the um, wiring for the lighting what I used was this, okay? This is actually, it, it bores a hole. I'm trying to get it right lighting here, but this is actually a one and a quarter inch, all right? And it's actually enough space for me to fit uh, these two wire nuts inside. So once I bore the hole through, I'm not gonna go uh, the whole distance through, but just enough space for the wiring as well as placing these things in, all right? So I made my mark through, and now I'm gonna make my hole. show you something here as I'm drawing the hole uh, right at my mid mark 
um, the light is still going to land around this area, but it'll be covered, okay? Now, what happens sometimes is when they place the, uh, this is already a, a built, already built fence, um, so they uh, use to nail in the pickets um, that nail over there, okay? And if that happens, um, then uh, what I did with my last light is I made another hole that's a little bit further away. Okay, so that's the center mark for this tire hole. I'll place my hole over there, uh, and then it'll be just a little bit wider, okay? So right there, okay, that's enough space for each wire coming in and another wire coming right back out. So here's the light and I've been measuring about two to three inches outside because you can always readjust the wiring by tucking it back into the light. So about two, three inches, I usually would cut right around here. Okay, actually a little bit less. Once that cut is made, you're just gonna split the wire, okay? And let's see, one third or one point three. And a uh, little bit less, a little bit more than an inch and a half, okay? And then you just peel the coating away. All right, and then you, you're gonna twist these wires, okay? So it makes it nice and solid when you're twisting all the wires together, okay? So now I grab the wire from the, the light back there and I, I just, I pull it, but I don't, I don't make it too tight, okay? Um, I don't mind if there's a loop because I can always loop it uh, behind each post. So with my mid mark and where my hole is, I hold my thumb there and then bring it up to the length of the, uh, the rest of the two by four and make my cut. Now the same thing, now that I have the, this right there. Now that I have that, now this, this wire is gonna go over to the next loop. So same thing, um, uh, the length of the, the wood, because you can always cut it back. You make it too short, um, then you might, you're gonna run into problems. And then uh, once I have it there, from where the hole is, then bring it back to, uh, forward more. And again, it's okay if you have a little bit of excess wire. Again, you can tuck it uh, either inside or a loop it, um, have it sag a little bit behind each post. Uh, it'll help in case the wood, uh, the fence does expand or contract. It has a little bit of some, uh, some uh, leeway, okay? So once the wire, both wires are in, I'll just use this to pull it out this way, okay? Um, it's easier. And this one doesn't matter because that's still on the spool. I can always cut it. It's easier to strip the wires after you get it outside the hole because if you um, do it before, then it gets all uh, bunched up as you're sticking it through the hole underneath and then pulling it back out, okay? So I took my cap off, all right, and this is what it looks like underneath. You can see the LED lights. And again, if you want to tuck it in, what you do is you just push the wire through um, because there's not that much space in the hole, okay? Um, you can always cut it short, but I always like it better when it's just pulled in. Uh, that way I have a little bit more play with the wire. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, one, one of these wires are a little bit longer than the other. You see that? So it's easy. If I can just pull this one back down so they're about the same on each side. And grab my light, which is right here. And with these LED lights, because um, when you're wiring lights, um, soldering lights together, they usually uni, um, one direction, unidirectional. With these lights, it's really cool because it doesn't matter whether it's this way or the other way, it will still turn on. Okay, so let's put them all together. Now in this case, what I'll do, make sure everything's the same length, and then twist the wires by hand. I mean, you can use a pair of pliers, electrical pliers, or what have you, but this one works fine for me. 
and poke it through and then twist as you're and you'll know when you have a good a nice fit because it gets tighter and tighter to turn okay oh that hurts so again same thing see that so now i'm going to get these wires here and just twist them all together And just like the first one. Okay, once they're all snug, now what you can do. Ah, oh man, that hurts. Um, just pull the wires down, okay? As you're pulling it down, let me see here. As you're pulling it down, okay, then you gotta find a way to twist. Okay, I'm gonna need both hands for this thing here. Pull it back up. I guess before you pull it down, you wanna place the nuts inside. So make it go this way. Let me see, there you go. Okay, it's gonna look like this. It's a little, very little tight space, uh, but because it's low wattage low voltage it's all right and then you can pull this wire through try to find your mid mark and there you go so now next step is to drill in both of these uh, screws in to hold the light up So you'll notice that there is a little bit of a loop of wire, which is fine. So with the, my handy staple gun, I will go under each one and work my way through. Okay, now one thing I want to show you, when you're wiring everything, you want to make sure that the wire is flat. So, you know, when the wire is coming in this way, it comes up and then coming back down that way. That's why you can tell. So it'll be nice and clean. My first light, uh, it was a little bit twisted. Um, you still won't be able to see it as much, but still, um, you just want a nice clean uh, uh, job. Okay, and then what I'll do is with a hammer, just uh, lightly tap it in so it's more snug. Okay, like this one, where is it? All right. So now I'm nearing the post. I'm gonna try to get it as close to this post as possible. Okay, so now you have it like that. And then on the other side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way towards that post from this light. So you'll see. So that's what we have here. I'll just keep working my way through. And as I get closer, that's where you have the loop. All right, you're gonna be able to notice it, but it won't be too bad. Because most of it is behind the post. So there you go. Mm 
I am going to change up my game plan. The inch and a half hole that I was uh, drilling uh, was a little bit too tight for this, okay? So um, they're both made for outdoor landscape. Uh, the only difference is this one you can actually screw onto the wires, whereas this one you have to crimp it, okay? Um, and uh, as you can tell, the length of each one, it's, this one's a little bit smaller, all right? Now for my crimper, you can use any um, pliers or what have you. I am gonna use this thing, okay? That area right there. So again, you have three wires. Make sure they're about the same on each side. And then twist them right through. Again, an extra pair of pliers right there. Make sure everything is right there. Then you get your, you can actually still see the wire through the plastic there. And then just crimp it. Make sure everything's all in. As always, I always place the electrical wiring, I mean electrical tape around, and then I work my way up. After seeing how much space I had on the, uh, the new wire nuts, I decided to go back and change the ones I have done previously. Now I have another probably 15 more to go and it's pretty much the same thing. I'll show up on part two um, so you guys can see what it looks like, but also I had to do uh, a bit of a change on the, the lighting on the fence.